Let's hit the racetrack If you part of Dirt Nation with well, that is where we hang at Me and all my buddies We are dirt next to the roots From our racing t-shirts Camo hats and lace boots You say you wanna have fun Let's hit the racetrack And if you part of Dirt Nation with well, that is where we hang at Me and all my buddies We are dirt next to the roots From our racing t-shirts Camo hats and My name is Steve Ritchie <coughs> And I own uh, late model crate uh, started driving in 84 <clears throat> and uh, so I started out in a 9 to 1 class back then and and that's a competitive class and I didn't know beans from apple butter about it really but I started out and you learn as you go and, and first went to the track I had a had a race car I had a truck I borrowed a trailer and didn't even have a spare tire <laughs> and Went down there and I just wanted to start, you know, and have a little bit of fun. So I meant it for me anyway. Yeah, I went out to uh, GT Curves there one racing over <laughs> there one day, and, and well, I'd been going out there anyway. But this particular day, I went out there and I seen a car I had one race ready sitting there for sixteen hundred dollars, and I just almost bought it, but I didn't. So I come to the house and I better think about this and talk to Libby about it, and. You better not have bought that race car. And I said, well, I didn't. But I said, I'm going to get me a race car. And she knew I would. So I said, I'm going out there again next Saturday. If it's there, I'm buying it. <clears throat> well, I went back out there and it's gone. So they had this other one sitting there and I bought it. <laughs> and, uh, and I was down at Smoky Mountain one, one night. I heard Jason's name mentioned over the loudspeaker driving uh, James Kelso's car. And I thought, well, I thought he'd quit. Mm -hmm. Going to work at the same time. And we got talking going up the road. <laughs> and he said, uh, I might need to come over and see if I can see if I can fit in that seat. I said, Well, come on. And uh, just in a few days well, he come over and we've been hooked up since ever since. And I mean, yeah, I would like to have done better. <clears throat> I'd like to have won more races. I'd like to have won track championships. Uh, but I had a lot of people always told me I was too nice a driver, wasn't aggressive enough. That really helped me as far as being a race car driver. I mean, I got aggressive. Uh, back then I had, you know, me and my brother raced together. And, <clears throat> and uh, every week, for about five weeks there, I was tearing the front end off that car every week. We went up there and we asked uh, Rusty Cardwell. He was running up there then. And we asked him, said, uh, what's the... Uh, What's the groove around the track? Which way is the fastest way around? He said, on the bottom. He said, don't get off the bottom. And that was the first time I was up there, ever on that track driving. And we started that race, and I think I started on the outside front row. And we dropped that green, they dropped the green flag and uh, took off. And Rusty jumped out, and I fell right in behind him. And I was chewing in his rear bumper the whole time. I mean, he, and he knowed it too. And when race is over, I finished second, and he won it. He come over and told me, he said, I ain't telling you nothing else. <laughs> he said, if I'd have messed up, he said, you'd been gone, and they would have caught you. <clears throat> me and Jason first got together, I was <laughs> uh, I was running the four-cylinder cars. And uh, I was sitting here in the garage every one, one week, getting that car ready for the, for the next that, that week's race. And, and uh, Jason come by. We've always, I've known him for known him for a long time, and uh, he come by and he said, uh, "Just told he said, uh, I want to rent your race car Saturday night." Well, that was uh, Smoky Mountain had been closed, and then they opened back yeah. up. Yeah. And, and I didn't have a car, and I was just yeah. I was dying to race, yeah. dying to race. And I know my wife she had told me she said, uh, "Because we we live, you can see the lights, the glow." And she said that thing's like a big bug zapper. It just draws me <laughs> in and zaps me. But uh, anyway, so boy. I agreed to let him run it that Saturday night, and, and we we go down there, and uh, he takes that car there and practice. And the car was good in practice, and we didn't have to do a whole lot to it. I believe you led every lap of it, yeah. didn't you? Led every lap of it and won it. And uh, so that was the first time he had drove my car. Then that was. Back in the nineties, was, was yeah, it we is. we had led. He had led the whole race, and uh, they've got two marks on the wall up there in turn four, and they say this is at four eleven. Yeah, and they tell you to 
anywhere between them two marks, you can start the race. A firing box. So he yeah. dropped, come out of turn four there, Jason was going to wait just a little bit later in the box to, to take off. But when he got to that first mark, they just drove right by him on the bottom side. And uh, Here I'm sitting there. And Jason just crept along down the front straight away. And usually, you, you know, the front tar, car don't start. Well, they'll just throw the caution flag and restart them. Well, they didn't restart this one. No, they they let them run. So, and, yeah, uh, I kind of, I had a little bit of a melt. So he goes real slow down through turn one, two, and real slow back straight away, and it still ain't never throw yeah, the caution flag. When I go down and start down the back straight, I look over, Mark Bell's a flag at 411. He had the white flag in his hand. By then, I was, yeah. steam was coming out of my ears. So he just stood on it, come through three and four, and come out of turn four, he just spun it out right there straight away. And stopped, got out, and ran to the start finish line. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like and, an idiot. Uh, uh, you know, and I tell them, you know, what he thought about it, yeah. his side of it, what not. I'm just glad the deacon couldn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but they disqualified us because he got out of the car. Yeah, which they and, should. And, that, and that's I mean, a rule. You yeah, get out of your car, they, they you're should. disqualified unless it's a safety right. issue. Right. Fire or something. Yeah. But I mean, they should. If but, it was. Uh, yeah, it was. But they didn't. They didn't see it our way. So no, no. So we come back the next. Come home. We work on the car, and we go back the next week. And when a man owns a race car, and, and he lets you drive it, I mean, you you kind of want to. I don't know. I mean, repay him with a win at least. You know, not necessarily the money, but just as much as your hard work paid yeah. off. Yeah. You, you can't know. let things sit like that stay inside of you. No. So. And, and, tear you up. and you hear people talk about, they'll say, I ain't never coming back here. Yeah. And the next week they show up with a big yeah. old plate of crow. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you can't. You know, and so, I mean, I made sure we didn't say that. Right. Because, you know, especially where racetracks are now, you, they're getting few and far between yeah. to choose to race that. So, and I kind of think my talent is it, a great car. You know, I mean, I feel comfortable in it. Um, you, you know, I feel like I can... You know, you can manhandle it almost, so to speak. And uh, when uh, you know, when you move up, limited, super, whatever. Of course, you've got to have tons more talent behind the wheel, and you've got to have more talent in uh, in the crew. You know, that can make the adjustments. Yeah. And that knows if you do this, this is going to happen, and, and you got to have a lot more talent in the pocketbook too. Yeah. But, but a lot of times, then too, that had that. Uh, um, what was it, twenty dollars a car load? Yeah. You know, and that'd be people in a school bus. Just twenty dollars for the whole bus to get in. But then they would eat French fries like yeah. crazy. Yeah. But uh Jason Welshin, he uh I mean I've known him since he was a kid. And of course I grew up racing motorcycles, dirt bikes. And uh and he he uh, Welshin did too. And I remember of course he was he was about the same size as he is now, but it's a lot shorter. And uh, as a kid, and uh, but I mean, he could ride a motorcycle. He, he was he was pretty good on one. But uh, I remember his uh, his dad, Cotton. He used to always say, "Jason, if you pull this whole shot, we'll stop at Shoney's on the way home and eat." And sure enough, little Welsh, and he'd he'd pull that whole shot. You know, he'd come out first. You know, he'd. A lot of times get passed, you know, but he was always he was good on that start. And uh, Todd Huffstutt, or another mutual friend we had that raced, we used to aggravate him and say, uh, uh, about you know stopping at Shoney's Steve. <laughs> and that's how, and we started calling him Dumpling. And uh, so that I mean, then, you know, you're talking probably 1990, you know. Well, he was calling him Dumplin' then, and of course, then he got into the car deal, and the Dumplin' Express came along, and, you know, that, that's kind of, and that's the honest truth how that nickname got started. 